out of this breaking letter uh, just sent by the Attorney General William Barr uh, to leaders in both parties up on Capitol Hill include that he's planning to release some version of the Mueller report by mid-April or sooner, the Attorney General says. He adds that this report is roughly 400 pages. That sounds a little longer than the 300 pages or so we heard about. Uh, and then an important point uh, where he says that although the president, quote, would have the right to assert executive privilege over certain parts of the report, he has stated publicly he intends to defer to me, and accordingly, there are no plans to submit the report to the White House for a privilege review. So that's important since Democrats have been suggesting that the White House may have time to scrub this, that maybe they were going to uh, try to cover up some details. Let's bring in our chief White House correspondent, John Roberts. React to that privilege question, John, if you will, and what else is standing out in this letter for you? It's a, it's a very important point, and it's actually uh, somewhat surprising because I was told all along as we were getting close to the release of the bar summary of the Mueller report findings that in order to get the Mueller report out in any kind of form, it would likely have to involve some sort of review between Attorney General Barr and Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein and uh, Pat Cipollone, the White House counsel, and Emmett Flood, who is the in-house counsel here at the White House, on the Mueller investigation because you have an awful lot of materials in there that would be subject to executive privilege, not the least of which is the transcript of uh, some 30 hours of conversations between Robert Mueller's investigators and Don McGahn, who is the former White House counsel. And then, because there was all the this transparency from the White House, which was the suggestion of John Dowd and Ty Cobb, you have thousands, tens of thousands, really, of documents uh, that are in-house White House communications, interagency communications, interpersonal communications, uh, most of which would be subject to executive privilege. And you would think that the White House would want to check to make sure that uh, whoever was reviewing this uh, would be very prudent about what is and, and is not released. But it would appear, according to the attorney general, that the president has turned all of the reins of that over to the attorney general to make the decision. And the White House counsel's office will not be involved here at all, which is really putting a tremendous, tremendous amount of faith in an individual that the president doesn't really know all that well. I mean, he knows of Bill Barr's reputation. He thinks he's a stellar individual, but it's not the White House counsel. And uh, so I think the president here is, I don't want to say he's taking a, a risk or he's making a gamble, but he is putting an awful lot of faith in the Department of Justice to thoroughly scrub this thing to make sure that no items that are subject to executive privilege that the White House would not want out there don't get out there. Yeah. Right? John, important point you make, because about a week ago, as you know, there were reports circulating that the president in private was asking people, phoning them, what do you know about Barr? What do you know about this guy? That maybe mm -hmm. he was a little nervous that he didn't know what the letter was going to say that was summarizing the Mueller report. That has now come out, obviously, and the president, we know from his public comments, is pretty uh, positive, pretty high on both the attorney general and the letter suggesting that he was cleared at least on collusion. And there's a, a debate, as you know, coming uh, on what exactly the full Mueller report says uh, about the allegations yeah. of obstruction. So jump in on that point. And, and, and because this has just come out, I haven't had a chance to, to check with Rudy Giuliani and Jay Sekula, who are the president's outside counsel. I, I know that they would love to see this report before it's made uh, public or sent to Congress. Uh, they know that they're likely not going to see it. And now Barr has said that the White House is not going to be consulted at all about this. But uh, I, I suspect that Rudy Giuliani may have concerns about the fact that the White House counsel's office is, is not going to look at this. I mean, particularly uh, when you consider Rod Rosenstein's involvement in signing those FISA warrants uh, way back when this investigation was getting going. Now, having Rosenstein still there through this process is political insulation for the president. But uh, again, uh, the president is putting an awful lot of faith and trust in, in Bill Barr. Uh, but I, I would assume that because of his stellar reputation, Barr is going to go through this thing with a fine-tooth comb no and doubt. make sure that nothing is released publicly that shouldn't be out there. And, you know, you're talking about intimate conversations between the president and his top aides. That's stuff that you want to not get out into the public domain. Absolutely. Excellent reporting from our chief White House correspondent, John Roberts. Stand by, John. We're going to get back to you in a moment. I want to bring in Chris Wallace, uh, Fox News Sunday host. We were talking a moment ago. We had an inkling this might be coming out any moment now. Uh, so I appreciate you tap dancing with me a little bit. This was a this is a two page letter, so it's pretty brief. Uh, and what stands out for you, Chris? 
Well, it strikes me as an eminently uh, reasonable offer, uh, or not really an offer, a declaration by uh, the Attorney General. The fact is that the report was only uh, given to, uh, at what, 5 o'clock a week ago, so seven days mm -hmm. ago, to Bill Barr. He then summarized it on Sunday. The idea that they, he was going to be able to make the whole report public, having uh, dealt with all the issues, as you've pointed out, about grand jury testimony, intelligence mm -hmm. information, uh, it, you know, that he'd be able to do that by this Tuesday in, in about nine days seemed uh, like a reach. It, as I say, I think it seems like a pretty reasonable uh, position for the attorney general to take, and particularly as you and John have been talking about mm -hmm. the fact that the White House is not going to get a look at the report before Congress does or the public does. Having said that, my guess is that the Democrats are going to make say it's an offer they can't accept, well, uh, and that they will say, well, there's already had been talk that, you know, if they didn't turn it over right away, it was a cover-up, that there's a scrubbing. You know, yes, the White House counsel isn't going to take a look at it, but the president's appointee, the attorney general, is going to take a look mm -hmm. at it, and he's going to be able to make decisions. Uh, so I suspect Republicans are going to say, gee, this is, pretty, this is pretty generous, this is pretty reasonable, pretty transparent, and Democrats are going to label it a cover-up or a delay, even though we're only talking about a matter of a couple of weeks. Right. Chris, I, I want to get to the details of the letter again, but first I want to stay on your point because it's important. Of course the Attorney General serves at the pleasure of the President. He was nominated by this President, but when Democrats over the last few days have been suggesting that he's sort of a pawn of the President, and in the words of Chuck Schumer yesterday, he said that, that Bill Barr is delaying the release of the Mueller report. The fact that this letter does a number of things says, A, uh, as Attorney General, I'm going to get a big chunk of this 400-page report out by mid-April. B, he's willing to testify May 1st, May 2nd before the Senate and the House, the Attorney General. And C, I'm not giving the White House a look beforehand. Does it make it harder for Democrats to claim this is some kind of a cover-up? Uh, it may make it harder, but it doesn't make it impossible. And I, I will predict that they're going to say, you know, we don't want to see Bill Barr's version uh, of this report. We want to see, I'm, I'm just telling you what I think they're, mm -hmm. uh, predict their, their action is going to be. We want to see the full report. We only, not only want to see the full report, we want to see all of the underlying documents, all the investigations, all the interviews with witnesses. Uh, they're going to want, they're going to fight for transparency. Look, Regardless of, of the fact that I think the Democrats are going to try to move off this to some degree and get to other issues like health care and equal pay and, and education, they see it a political advantage to continuing to hammer the president on various investigations. And, there, you know, one, the floor of the House will pass some legislation, probably they'll go nowhere in the Senate, but you're also going to see folks like Adam Schiff and Elijah Cummings and Jerry Nadler continue to investigate the president. And, you know, they're not, I promise you what they're not going to say, this is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill Barr. We're satisfied with this. No more questions. That's, that, I promise that's not the way, the tack they're going to take on this. That seems a safe assumption. I want to run something else past you by, uh, Chris, as you were talking. I was going through the letter. About midway through, Bill Barr pushes back on a letter from the Democrat, uh, Jerry Nadler, who had suggested uh, that uh, the letter of last weekend was a, quote-unquote, four-page summary of the special counsel's review. Bill Barr writes, to the Democrats and Republicans, my March 24 letter of last Sunday was not and did not purport to be an exhaustive recounting of the special counsel's investigation or report. As my letter made clear, my notification to Congress and the public provided pending release of the report, a summary of its principal conclusions, that is, its bottom line. He goes on to say it's, it's 400 pages, Chris. Uh, that could be aimed at the Democrat saying, look, uh, your narrative is not true about me trying to cover this up. But, Chris, it could also be aimed at Republicans who have been celebrating, right, in, in the sense of, look, folks, I was not saying this is done. I gave you four pages. There's a whole lot more in here. Listen, uh, you had uh, Robert Mueller on the issue of, of collusion. He basically gave the president, at least according to what we know from Barr, and I can't imagine that Barr mischaracterized it, because if so, my guess is Robert Mueller would have, uh, would have cried foul, that he basically gave him a clean bill of health on the issue of collusion, that there was no cooperation, coordination between either President Trump and the campaign and the Kremlin and the Russia. So on that, he gave him a clean bill of health. It obviously, it was a much more uh, mixed bill of health when it came to obstruction. And, you know, you had that quote, pretty interesting quote, 
that that Barr quoted from Mueller saying, you know, there's no we, we, there's not enough to charge a crime, but there's also not enough to exonerate the president. There is going to be some stuff. That I don't. I think it's obvious in these 400 mm -hmm. pages that the White House isn't going to like, and and that's why I think, you know, call it exoneration now and and take your victory lap and say we want to have accountability for all the people who got over their skis and saying that there was collusion, but. They're going to have to deal with some stuff. There's no question about no it doubt. when we see the whole report or as much of it as we end up seeing.